What's up guys, it's Tenkosh and it's beginner's guide for Against the Storm. So even if you went through all the tutorials and learned everything, you will still have a lot of issues with the game. Let's start with the Smoldering City. Here, these will give you XP that will increase your level and as you increase the level, you will get additional unlocks. Those might seem good at first, but in reality, they increase the pool of the buildings that you can build. And every time you will go in the mission, you will get more different opportunities that will be rolled on randomly. And that's really painful because you will have to adapt your strategy even more every time. As for the upgrades early on, it's pretty straightforward. You just go flat up because the price increase gradually. I would strongly recommend getting the essential buildings that are available because that will exclude them from the rewards pool so when you will get the next level up in the game you won't get option to get some lizard house if you can get it here moreover some mission includes building housing for your species and that will help you to get those missions done easier other than that there are some embarkation bonus buildings those are really good as well because they allow you to again save up on some recipes and maybe make some of your camps better those are pretty much uh, situational depending on the area you're going to but overall they can be really useful as well. If you just started out, you will only get food stockpiles, but as you progress the game, you will get machinery and artifacts as well. We'll talk about that when we'll get to the world map. And uh, yeah, my favorite upgrades here that are giving us fundamental upgrades, those will allow you to unlock more game mechanics and some of those might be really important. For example, getting this neighborhood is really worth it because by creating some uh, decorations, you will be able to increase your productivity of your buildings by 10% and that's really cheap and giving you a lot of boost. Outside of that, I really like the Vanguard Spire because it will give you a permanent plus one to available charges of all the stuff that you find on the map. That's really great. Then Unforeseen Riches is minimal increase but it will add up over time but i really like the everlasting flames that will uh, lower the consumption of your fuel in hearths and sometimes that might be an issue queen's patience isn't a problem for me because usually uh impatience doesn't really harm me and i never last to impatience i'm actually never last <laughs> villager speed is nice as well uh permanent boost to global production speed is good but if you don't have the resources it won't help you out so i wouldn't say it's the best option and quicker trade arrival while it's good when everything is going to your plan usually it's it's not your first pick to get unless you want the second bonus here like those additional corner store or blueprint for sale that might allow you to grow faster and maybe discord like this so it will be nice so yeah, outside of that, just evenly grow here, you won't be able to rush something that much because the price will be increased and your bonuses might be not that crazy. For example, when I will be able to get the starting ability, I will get it because that's just 10 free tools every time you embark. Outside of that, embarkation points are great. They will allow you to take more stuff with you and some cool embarkation bonuses and rerolls are always good options as well. As for the lock mechanics, you might be wondering which of those is worth it. Uh, training expedition isn't that great. Daily expedition is good. I haven't got it yet. But in order to get it, you will need to get a level 10 and unlock this tile over here. So once per day, you can do that royal expedition and venture into the strangest land. So that's like a daily mission for you. All right. Other than that, in your home here, you can ask your own for some advice, but uh, it's mostly useless for anything else than the upgrades, at least at this point. Now let's move on to the map. And here you can see that some tiles have specific resources so we always start with this citadel mountain and go sideways and uh yeah by default you can go for like couple of tiles away and you really don't want to build your city like that because then you will get lower reward each settlement will claim one tile around it as well so you would like to expand like that if you have some special uh map modifiers you might want to take a look at them like for example this one will give us artifact this one will give us machinery so when you are expanding you should try to go there on your first run you don't really need to rush towards the seal because most likely you won't make it in time this is my second playthrough after the end of the current cycle and I have a chance right now because I've got some cool upgrades, but the missions will be pretty hard. You can take a look at the game history to see how many years it takes you to finish a map. For me, it's on average 9 years. And the cycle lasts about 30 years, so it's like 3 settlements for me or maybe 4. So that's why we will try to... Uh, 
estimate if we can get to that seal. So if we go here, then we go there, then we go there, we might be able to get to the seal, so now it's worth going there. Otherwise, your best bet will be going for those map modifiers, collecting those bonuses and just farming those food stockpiles, machinery and artifacts in order to get the upgrade so you can do the better run later. At the bottom you can see the cycle progress and here it will take how much time out of the full cycle it took you to build that uh, settlement and yeah you will understand what I'm talking about. In the end when you finish your last settlement you can do it over the limit of the cycle I tried it before it works and after that you can build one last settlement on the seal in order to finish it or you will have to do the reset. Now probably getting the right start is more important than actual gameplay here when you select the area where you want to start you want to go to the summary and conditions and figure out what the hell is happening in this biome that will govern the tools that you would like to use the caravan that you would like to take and embarkation points that you would like to get with you in order to reforge the seal you will need those seal fragments you get them by finishing the mission and you can actually click on the seal and see the required amount of fragments for this one we need four so it will be really easy to get if we will be able to get there so for example, right now I'm rushing to the seal, so I want to build my settlement here, but it have really horrible modifier, forbidden land, so we will not get um, dangerous glades in the area, we will get only forbidden ones, and I never actually tried opening them because I'm scared. But I think I'm good enough, so we will give it a go. So then, you click on the summary, here you can see the amount of reputation you will need to get, and the amount of reputation points you can uh, get in this run before getting to the failure, as well as your rewards for finishing that. Royal Air Supply is a really great bonus, it allowed me to move deeper uh, by one tile and uh, see further from the last settlement so now instead of going here i can go straight over there you also can see the amount of fertile so soil over here but it's pretty random anyway because you can get unlucky and don't get any fertile lands it's still roguelike and you can't really do anything about that so here you can see the biome effect uh, trees will give us more wood which is really nice but that debuff is pretty tough honestly i wouldn't advise going in this area but um i'm up for the challenge so i will give it a go Moreover, you can see the severity here. Those are not that important early on. They will be important as you go deeper into the um, other biomes later on. They are all texting right now, so it's like a basic difficulty, I guess. Then you get the trees. That's what trees give. So by cutting the trees, you will get wood, resin, plant fiber, and eggs. And for natural resources, you will get clay here. So this area doesn't have stone plant fiber, berries, mushrooms, roots, vegetables, meat, eggs, and sea marrow. So now you can adjust your build to those needs. So for example, if we will get a farm here, uh, we will be able to get anything, but from the local resources, we won't get stone. So in order to improve roads, we will get the stone from the start and uh, then we will get the villagers i actually advise taking villagers with you all the time that's a nice bonus we still got two more embarkation points and i think i will take some extra roots some extra food basically so our guys won't die i don't have better bonuses right now but i think recipe would be way better but i need to play more to unlock it and the last but not least select the right difficulty for you i didn't ever play that settler because it's too easy for me so yeah look at that that's nothing uh i went on pioneer it was pretty hard if you go higher difficulty veteran for example you will get additional mechanics blight rot and corruption you will need uh, specific builders you will need to build specific buildings and assign workers in order to fight that otherwise you will lose people and uh yeah i'm not ready for that yet because i'm just a beginner so i'll play as a pioneer the higher the difficulty though the more rewards you will get after finishing the run so on settler you will get only 14 food stockpiles which is like seriously you will need to do four runs in order to get something unlocked on the pioneer it's 42 on the veteran it's already 63 on the highest difficulty available right now viceroy it's almost double of the pioneer but i'm not rushing too much so we'll go with the pioneer right now let me know what's your favorite difficulty while you're playing the game and yeah if you are not sure about yourself you can play on the settler it's totally okay to learn the game playing on the settler difficulty you will probably win the game anyway like that <laughs> so yeah let's embark 
Uh, you can name the settlement as well if you want to, but for me, it's uh, it doesn't matter. And here we go. That's our area. So before starting anything out, you would like to take a look around. Oh, wow. <laughs> So yeah, uh, I wanted to make a guide, but that will be a survival mechanics. Uh, all the glades are forbidden in this map mode, that's horrible actually. I don't think that I'll be able to win this. We will go there anyway and see what to do, but the chances of winning this is very small. I thought it will get the normal glades, but all the big glades will be forbidden, not the dangerous ones. Uh. Alright, let's risk it. So basically, what do you want at the start of your run? Uh, you would like to go to the camps and get two woodcutter camps. That's the basics that will allow you to explore, cut wood and start your settlement. We will build them right here. Then you would like to get some path. Uh, paths are really good because they will allow your villagers to move faster. So you really need to get those paths going and plan your village accordingly. So... Um, it will take them less time to travel around so you can build stuff properly. What's cool about the path? They are free. So you don't need anything but some work uh, effort in order to build them. And that will give you 5% speed increase. Paved roads require stone. So that's why we took stone with us in order to build it. They will give you 15% speed increase. And then at some point you will unlock reinforced road. Those will give you 25% speed increase. And, um, yeah, probably will unlock more later. Usually, at the start of the run, you can select three new buildings. Usually, I would advise you guys to wait a little bit and push a little bit forward. Unlock a unlock few glades to get that, but right now it's not the option for us. A lot of resources to explore. Hmm. And also, before starting out, you would like to explore the bonuses that you get. Give from the woods. It will give us free amber. That's great. Hour of peace. After each storm comes, uh, times of peace and regrowth. Gain zero point for gain half reputation points for every dangerous or forbidden glade event completed during the drizzle season. That's pretty cool. And then you get the negative ones. This one, looming darkness, is a default one. Additional effect will be added each hostility level. That's really bad. So we will get a lot of that. Hail storm. Villagers will die. If they will be homeless, that's horrible. Vanishing goods. Villagers have chance of consuming twice the amount. Oh my god, this is a really bad start. And strange lights. What's that? Destroying the yield with each production cycle chance. They need services to fulfill that. My god, that's like hardest run I ever had. I think we will fail. So yeah, then you can take a look at your first reputation bonus here. Let's see, we got the farm building. Herb garden. But since we don't really have the farm area, it's too early to go for that and we don't really know if it will give us any good. So before unlocking those buildings, we will still have to build the housing, we will still have to go explore the woods, so let's do that. At the start of the run, I advise you guys to worry about the food and get something that will harvest the food resources, like this building. Or maybe trappers camp, depending on your area. Foragers will work as well, but we don't have any of that. Alright, uh, when the woodcutter's buildings are ready, you can assign workers. You can do it in several ways. You can select the building and decide which workers to go work there. Beavers are the best for that because they have a chance to get uh, extra wood. Or you can right-click on this button and that will assign workers. By default, it will start with the beavers and then it will get the uh, most free faction let's put it like that so the only difference between the other species and uh, beavers that beavers will have chance to give you additional goods all right so let's cut into this dangerous glade i am so stressed right now so yeah the basic layout that you want to do is getting those wood cutters getting some stone cutters if you have stone or clay some food production uh, assigning workers over there and then working on your housing first you got the shelters you got the houses i advise starting with the shelters because they don't require some high uh tier resources like uh bricks and whatever they think like planks and bricks those things are expensive so yeah just get some shelters and make sure to plan the housing around your hearth because that building is the one that will allow you to heat up the area around it. Also, when you are reassigning the workers, you can easily click on the character on the species portrait and 
right click to reassign them, left click to assign them. That will allow you to easier manage your settlement by putting people where you want them to be. Also, after some time, when you start the game, you will get the orders. Here, you decide what you can do uh, in order to fulfill the require. Oh my god, this is so good. That's a building upgrade. We need six harpies for that. I'm not sure that we'll be able to finish it, but let's go get that one. And you want to plan ahead and get the right things. For example, this path is already done. That's easy. Uh, trade route will take way longer. And here we also get uh, movement speed for the workers on the cheap roads and some stones. So it's a good option. We can deliver it straight away. I don't advise doing this all the time. I did it just because we get additional Queen's Grace and additional free building. And the next one, uh, two Glade events and this stuff deliver. And for the next one, it doesn't really matter right now what do we want to get. This one is easier to do because selling goods is, well, easier than delivering them. And Glade events, which are horrible in this area that we have right now. So we will not pick it right now. Moreover, you will get the cornerstones, the buffs that you will use to make your guys stronger. And this is where you will need your reroll if something is wrong. So right now, we get clay delivery, it's good, but uh, in case if we don't get anything good, we can press the reroll button and uh, get rid of this and get something new. Let's get a clay delivery line. Honestly, I wouldn't expand so fast into Dangerous Glade, but here we have really low amount of food and that might end us pretty fast so instead we will try to establish some base mechanics here in the build in the base and then expand when you just start in the normal run with the normal glades small ones you would like to expand to them as fast as possible and see what do you get there so right let's get the buildings um depending on the buildings you might want to pick the ones that will finish at least one production chip it's really complex because it's rng based it's roguelike so yeah for example you would like to focus on uh, three things at the start. First one is bricks production, second is uh, planks production, and third one is food production. How does it work? Each building has stars next to some produced resource, right? And uh, you can click on this um, magnifying glass to see the recipes. So the thing is, for the food production, for example, biscuits, we will spend less resources to create more biscuits. Uh, moreover, they will make some types of uh, species happier, but overall it's really cool because in the end you will get more food. So that's only way to fight the hunger in the big settlements to produce food. Otherwise, your farms or whatever, the way you get in the basic resources won't keep up with your population growth. But sometimes it requires some rare resources. So here we need a flower and we can't really produce it here because when we point on the resource the resource that we can produce is kind of highlighted in blue and if it's all white you can't really produce that so right now it will be pretty useless in order to make the floor we need uh this rain mill or any other building that can produce it three stars buildings are the best they will produce more resources than anything else and that means that they will spend less of the basic resource to produce the final resource. And don't forget that you can always click here if you got those arrows and select the different basic resource to produce some stuff. It's really essential for some runs and for some resources. Otherwise, you will, uh, you will perish. So yeah, right now we don't have any cool resources that we can create. I would go with the rain mill, but we need to make sure that we can make farms. I had some runs where I had zero farms around me and I couldn't do anything. That was a pretty much a disaster, so uh, I didn't like that. Let's make roads closer to that glade where we're cutting to. And uh, if you are digging into some dangerous or forbidden glade, I advise to dig for the one that's further away from your base some of those have airway effect around them and if you fail it will destroy everyone around it or everything around it i don't know what dangerous ones will bring like forbidden ones will bring i don't think it will be anything good but at least it will be, it will be further away from our base moreover you can move the buildings for free some of those some of those are for money so if you want to move the house it will cost you wood but if you move the camps they can be moved around for free and uh, that's how you can kind of select their working area so they can work where you want them to work. Okay, let's cut it out and see what do we get here. So inside of this area that we unlocked, we got the artisan ruin building that we can actually use to produce some cool resources for us. That's great. 
but we got the ancient burial site that's the event that will do a lot of harm to us if we won't fix it in order to fix it we don't have the resources here and we don't have the resources here so we're pretty much done uh rotten matter creeps up from underneath the burial site and spawn six blood flowers i don't know what those things are so usually here you got two options that you can do and for the most events you can either get the resources and bonuses for your base like those are really great like they are really good or you can get some queen's grace that will progress you towards the win in order to win you gotta fill up that queen's grace tab basically and the problem here that whatever we do we will not be able to fulfill the needs for disturbing dead because we need packs of building materials for that that will take a while to produce or um tools that we don't really have as well but no this one doesn't have it as well we have large abandoned cash that we could use but it won't get us anything as well barrels nah nothing will help us now the good thing that we got some farming area here those grass tiles are the ones where you can build farm fields and they will allow you to work on them but right now we have uh, more urgent matters to attend to so in this situation we don't really have that many options let's see what we can do we don't have the resources to start up anything we can make a makeshift points to create building materials how many do we need to finish this uh we need eight it might be possible to create that because we're definitely not getting that food even though the bonuses here are great, they are really good. We don't... Oh my god, two additional planks, that's really nice. But yeah, we won't be able to get there. Sometimes, don't stress out, you can click here and select the uh, goods that you can deliver here in order to finish the event, but not right now. So let's get a workstation and uh, hope that it will be enough for us. What's cool about those crude workstations that in order to create them... You don't really need anything but the wood, so you can make several of those and then get rid of them. So you won't use your parts on that, because parts are really rare and you want to save them up for something important. Alright, we got our first building here, let's assign workers here. And, oh, that's the wrong building. And now we can use wood to create planks, let's do that, because we will need those later on. Um... And we need to make a makeshift post. This one is kind of the same, so it only requires wood. And we will use those two buildings to produce packs of building materials for us. So yeah, right now we should focus on this in order to overcome the issue of this ancient burial site. And you got the timer before this event will happen. We don't really know what's that. And uh, we need to make sure that we will start it before this timer will be higher than this otherwise yeah it doesn't matter because we will not be able to finish it make sure to have some free workers if you need something done urgently because uh your free workers are the one that build stuff you don't need carriers in this game uh, everything's been carried by the workers of the buildings when the produced goods are like in the storage so don't worry about that all right so let's assign pack of building materials so in order to do what five eight of those we need 80 planks oh my god that will be expensive so we'll have to use all our planks and bricks in order to survive this i guess all right now we know that we have the farm so we can get the herb garden here that will allow us to create some food we can actually get the reputation bonus buildings we can get a small farm not right now uh foragers camp that will allow us to harvest ah by the way this area have some large deposits of food and everything so in order to harvest it your camps have to be higher level your basic camps are level one and you need level two camps in order to harvest like this meat for example so since we'll be going through the big uh, glades we might want to go for bigger camps so trapper's camp might be a good option for us to harvest some extra food and when you select the building when you mouse over it you can see that there is a current best at the bottom that means if it's like arrow up you will upgrade the efficiency from the building that you have the plus one is the new type of resource that you can produce so it's always nice to uh, know that i want this one kiln we don't have lizards because it produces coal and coal is really good for the warming up the village so let's get this one and let's get the brickyard so we will be able to get the better brick production the thing is this game have changing seasons all the time the storm is the worst one 
During the storm hostility increases, people are unhappy, and you get all those negative effects. So make sure that uh, when you are in the storm area and people are really unhappy, their resolve is really low, and it's when it's zero and lower, that you will remove your woodcutters. That will allow you to increase the resolve, because hostility is being combined of several things. The longer you play the game, the more you unlock the areas, uh, the amount of villagers and the amount of woodcutters. So woodcutters are really angry in the forest and you don't want it to happen when you're not ready for that, basically. So now you can see how different the three-star building and our, like, zero-star uh, makeshift workstation. If we make bricks here, we will spend six clay. If we make bricks in the brickyard, which is three-star, we will spend three clay. So, uh, no, two clay. That's like two times less uh, resource consumption for the same amount of the final resource. That's why it's a really nice idea to get some of those buildings at a high tier to produce the stuff that you need. Moreover, the production time is different as well. So in the makeshift it's 54 seconds, in the brickyard it's 27 seconds. So it's two times faster as well. So we are in the new year. And we are getting the new cornerstone. Let's see if we get something cool here that will help us. We can get barrels by uh, making planks. That's good. Let's get this one, I guess. Yeah, let's get this one. And uh, you will get a newcomers. You get two options usually. Maybe it will be unlocked later to get more. And here you can decide who to greet. Um, it's different amount of people. Sometimes different pieces and different bonuses. Right now I'll get those guys because they get the tools. And it will help me way more so let's assign more workers here let's assign additional worker here no not, not here god damn it over here because time is running out guys and we still have zero of those packs oh my god we got four of those in the storage so it's not that many as i want to but i think we might be able to finish it in time if we will just hurry up and you know make sure that we're doing the good job <laughs> So we used up all our bricks and most of our planks right now. There is no point uh, working the second makeshift post right now. We just need to make sure that we produce as many goods as possible uh, and do our best to, you know, produce all those packs of building materials. Okay, we can assign one worker here already. No, that's too early. Cool thing that you can force the delivery. So right now we got two in the storage of those things. We got six as we can see here, six of those packs of building materials in the warehouse. So if we will do this and force this delivery right now, uh, we actually don't need those guys working on this anymore. We need someone to deliver it. And we will assign one worker here to do the excavation. We might be able to do it in time. So, deliver in progress. Let's go. There we go. Storage is empty. Come on, deliver it where it needs to be delivered. There we go. Nice. So now we can focus on finishing this thing. Uh, let's get additional worker here. Additional worker will lower the amount of time required, but not by much. As you can see here, we should be okay with only one worker doing that. Let's see. So yeah, the event started, the timer is ticking, so even if we remove that lady, we will do it in time and luckily we survived. That was crazy. We can continue the tutorial. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, you will need to build farming fields in the farming area in order for it to work. And when you select the farming building, you would like it to cover as many tiles as possible. Sometimes, like right now, it's impossible to cover everything. So build it where it covers most of the area and it's more comfortable, most comfortable, and where it's most comfortable for your delivery lanes, basically. So that's how you play the basic game, although usually you get a normal glitch that you can explore. You get new orders from time to time and you gotta uh, select the ones that will fit you the most and select the ones that you will make sure that you can complete. Like, don't go for something crazy because it's cool. Um, if you can get something that you can complete, go for that. Because this will be your main source of progression towards your uh, game ender towards your victory basically and yeah some of those might be weird so here we need to fulfill need for jerky for eight villagers so that's only harpies for us only them need that good you can take a look at what each faction needs over here 
So we see the jerky is right here. Complex food for those guys. Nobody else like that. So we will need to have at least eight harpies to finish that milestone. Another one is getting harpies resolved to 14 and getting four aesthetics. It will give us more uh, biscuits production, which I think is a better option. So we'll get this one and uh, we can boost that resolve a bit later so guys important moment uh as your queen impatience grows when you get one point of reputation it, it actually shows here one impatience point will be lowered there we go so um that's how you will balance the game out also when you are setting up your economy it's a good idea to include some limitations for the goods so they won't overextend the basic resources um, I don't have those set up that high. I usually set them about 40 each. You can do it in each building or there is a recipes panel where you can set uh, the limit for each specific resource. Let's actually see if it will carry over to the next run. When you have several buildings that can produce the same type of resource, for example, a kiln can produce bricks and the brickyard can produce bricks, you would like to turn off production for the building that's less efficient unless you really need that resource because otherwise it will be way too expensive for you and you really don't want that another thing that even the lowest tier production have better efficiency so for example in order to get those 10 jerky you will spend only six meat or insects and some wood or maybe a bit of oil or marrow or other resources like one coal, for example. In order to produce 10 food, it's way more efficient and the higher the stars is, the better it is. Another tip I can give you, as your village grows and you need more place for housing inside of this area, it's not our situation right now, but yeah, you can move away the production buildings outside of this range, somewhere here, and fill this area with the housing. That way, uh, the people will be happy next to their hearth and uh, yeah, you will be enjoying your production and everything oh yeah by the way early on once you got your basics you might want to get some things for example decorations one park one small park you can actually create uh, smaller decorations in like hard to access and useless areas but i just use the normal park will allow you to get to the next year of your heart if you got the upgrade that i have you can make two of those small parks so two small parks and one garden that will give you 10% productivity to all your buildings. Same with the resources like this herbalist camp that doesn't have any resources nearby. And then you don't have anything to use it for anymore. You just place it somewhere and deactivate and let those guys free. So you can use them somewhere else to produce other kind of resource. So there we go, the first upgrade will give you two global results, that means all your population will be a bit happier. And once you finish the garden decoration, it's outside of range, so yeah, uh, it have to be fully inside of the city range, only then it will work. Bam, it will give you the neighborhood bonus, that will increase your productivity and ancient hearth resistance to corruption by 150 and that bonus will also work outside of the range of the city i think it matters where the workers live or something but uh yeah we get those bonuses no problem even if the production buildings are far away so that's actually something to consider now we can finish harpy's resolve mission why we can uh, favor them that will make other species a bit more unhappy but that will make the specific species happy and if we need 14 happiness, we can use those tricks to finish those missions. That will give us more production here and some nice bonuses and overall it's really good. So don't forget to do it from time to time. Uh, moreover, we'll talk about that in a second. New people, let's get... We need harpies and everyone actually. So yeah, moreover, once you will go through the blue line, that's like the resolve that's required to get the reputation, you will start getting reputation per minute. And uh, once your faction will give you one point of reputation, their required result will increase. So now it's getting 0 0.06 per minute. And once it will get one tick of reputation, then it will kind of have the higher th threshold in order to be used. But that's a nice way to gain some extra reputation for your victory or to, to unlock something. 
The bonuses that give you production yields to packs of goods are really good, so I advise you guys doing that. Uh, by the way, we haven't built yet, but we need to build a trading post. That will allow you to trade with, well, other cities, other areas, and gain some extra income. So why right now Harpies are unhappy? Less happy than before. Probably they ate something. The jerkies or something. So once you realize how your village works, you can actually upgrade your road toward the area where your guys move the most. That will allow you to move way faster and save up time on the movement and everything. So yeah. Now let's talk about the trade. We got the trader here and uh, you need to build the trade outpost. There is a tutorial about that. It's pretty straightforward. Mm, from my personal perspective, in order to trade efficiently, you will need to create trade goods. Those packs of stuff the Provisioner makes, it's really, really efficient to trade that instead of your normal goods because they don't cost that much. Although sometimes you might want to sell some of your important stuff in order to get some extras. Those traders sometimes have really good perks, sometimes not that good, and you will never know what will be useful for you later on. So, if you can find something here, do it, get it, and enjoy it. So, for example, lower fuel consumption in Hearth is really good for me, so I'll get it. And then you get the trade routes once you unlock it in the Smoldering City. Here you will need to get the packs of provisions and send your goods to trade with other towns that you established on the map. And um, you can truly decide what to do here. It's about the city, what they desire. And it just goes like that. So you will be trading here. It's sometimes required for export quests that we have here for other quests. So yeah, just, just keep in mind that there is an option to do that. And that's really easy way to get rich and later on to get extra resolve if you get the guild house. So yeah, it might be really beneficial in some critical situations. So have some money saved up for those occasions. What I really like about the Provisioner that it creates some basic resources for you, but most importantly it creates packs of provisions. Those can be sold and uh, they are really good value. So four of those 0.2 worth items, that's like 0.8, they will give you 1.5 worth of goods in the end and you can use it to trade to other cities as well. So yeah, this is a really good option if you are looking for something like that. And you can also make flour that's really good for you too, if you get the basic resources for it, but mm, sometimes you might have issues with the wheat. You might want to use roots, but be careful because roots are actually the, the common food for your people as well, so they will eat it. You might actually use it all up for the uh, floor that you can't really use to create other types of food yet, and that will be a bad thing to do, so don't rush it. So, we have a problem, we don't have more... Ah, we got this. Another really simple but useful tip that I can give you, don't rush expanding. Uh, this time, especially in this map, you don't really wanna rush, you wanna take it slow, one step after another, and now, after I unlocked one glade and barely handled it, I've got it. The huge settlement here that's actually pretty good right now, and only then I go into Forbidden Glade. And it's a good idea to try to... Um, time it properly with the trader, so uh, that way you can actually get the trader, get its goods that might be useful, like tools, for example, are usually saving everything up, and uh, buy it if you don't have it, and then go and finish the mission, otherwise you might have serious issues. Another thing you can do, you can destroy your unnecessary buildings, and that will actually give you most of the materials back most of the time. So, small herbalist camp, it costs 3 of those um, cogs and 10 wood, and if we destroy it, we will get it all back. So, this is really good. If you don't use something, why the hell do you keep your resources in it, right? So, there we go, we got the new- oh my god, that's a goddamn dragon! And what's that? Uh, plantation. What does it do? Berries and plant fever. It's actually not that bad. I don't really like the amount of uh, useful ground around it, but the dragon, what does it do? We will get really bad consequences. We can tame it. Then we'll get the storm bird. Provides eggs and friendliness has a positive effect on harpies. Counts as 16 decorations. Or we can feed it 
and he will give us some resources. So taming it is actually an easy way out because you don't really need any resources. And uh, we will do that. Let's take next storm in two minutes. 41 seconds. So let's get two people here. Harpies, they are friends of this dragon. And tame it in three minutes. That way we will tame it before the storm. And now we will have some negative effects, but they won't be that strong. Let's go. It will instantly start the storm. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Beaver's resolve is low, so we can unassign some woodcutters to keep it lower. And yeah, it produces eggs, so I can't say no to that, right? Meanwhile, we can rebuild this plantation. Uh, hopefully, we can move it somewhere. And we get some good resources here as well. So let's do that. That's another area that we can actually use for something. We got some small eggs here as well. And guys, we unlocked the new production building, the range. It's uh, locked behind some progression. But it's a really cool one because it doesn't require you to, to have anything around it. It doesn't need the farming. It doesn't need anything. It's just getting the resources by default. And it doesn't require building materials as well. So only the wood, which is pretty cool. And yeah, guys, closer to the mid-end of the game, first thing, your village should look like this. So you will be having production chains. Basically, in the end, you would like to create packs of trade goods, packs of luxury goods, packs of whatever goods you can get. And you can sell them later in the, in the merchant because those things... They are being valued quite a lot and you can earn a lot of money doing that. Moreover, closer to the end, you might be able to rush the game actually. So right now we need four more points to win and we can finish one quest, that's one reputation. Then we got three caches of lard, abandoned stuff, whatever. And uh, we need 36 tools in order to open them up. So we can do all that. So we will do this, assign workers here. Investigate, same here. And that will actually win the game when this will be completed. So I was waiting because just in case if during the game I will need some of those resources to urgently save myself, I would do that instead. Those will not go anywhere well, unless there will be some event. So that's like three points over here. Oh, there are four actually. <laughs> nice. And you can finish some quests, some rush some quests maybe, and get the victory. And your goal is to get the victory as soon as possible. You don't want to wait for long because on the map, things will develop while you're doing stuff here. And you won't be able to push that far. So there we go. Bam. Bam. We are done. <laughs> Do you remember when I started this? I thought that I will lose. But using the strategy and wits, I've managed to go through this. And yes, that's the royal resupply I was talking to you before. Uh, those bonuses are crazy good. So, um, caravan wagons will allow me to move further away. Supply package will give me more reserve points. An obsidian box will allow me to get more seal fragments, which I don't really need. So let's get a supply package. And in two ticks, yeah, we can't push that far, too far away. In two ticks, in two settlements, we'll be able to reach the bronze seal over here and seal it this time. Well, at least try. We need only four seal fragments. We have that already, so there is no point rushing them. And we have plenty of time to do that. And yeah, from here, I wouldn't advise going some other way if you are doing the same stuff. Because, because you can just move next to your settlement that you built the last one. So... Even though this area is explored, you can't really move there. So normally, when you select in the next area, you would like to get the one that will give you more resources, I think. Because over here, well, unless it's something that you would like to get, some special resources or, or some biome, but usually it works like that. Oh my god, Herbalist Camp cost 6 points. But anyway, it will be... I, I think I'd rather save it to the... Ah, I don't save anything. Yeah, I'd rather save them to the last run. So, the bonus embarkation points that we've got can be used in any game in the span of the cycle. So, current run will be easier, I think. So, we will save those because Herbalist Camp costs 6 points. So, we can't really get them right now. I'll just get the normal stuff. The bonuses with the resources. So yeah, I'm a bit from the future right now. And this is the normal map because I got unlucky with the crazy map. And here, when you start your run, it's advisable to go through those small areas first instead of those dangerous glades. But dangerous are not as dangerous as forbidden one that we had last time. 
I mean, you will see it a bit further away. So yeah, um, if you just start out, that will be the safer way to cut through those slowly. And there are some tiles where you can cut through two of those at the same time. So for example, if you're coming from this glade to those, you can cut here and get access to both way easier and quicker. So yeah, guys, those are all the basic tips for the beginners I can give you right now. This game is very complex and I like it quite a lot. Your best bet will be playing it more and learning the mechanics yourself because you need to learn the production chains, you need to learn the perks and how to combine them the best. I'm still learning myself, so if you have any tips, share them down below in the comments. And guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and check out the description for the playlist of my playthrough of Against the Storm. And yeah, that's about it for now. Have a good one. Stankosh out. Bye.